Welcome to Felicity Was Here, where three super fans of the underappreciated 90s gem Felicity rewatch every episode and discuss one young woman's journey of self discovery in New York City. So put on your coziest cable knit sweater, grab a cup of Dina DeLuca coffee, and join us in watching the trials and tribulations of one Felicity Porter. Hello and welcome everyone to Felicity Was Here. I'm Heather and I am Team Noel. I'm Melissa and I am Team Ben. Hi, I'm Dr. Joe, and I'm going to call everyone out. <laughs> <laughs> and today we are talking about season one, episode one of Felicity, the WB series from back in the 90s. We're talking about the pilot. Hi, everyone. How's it going? So excited to be here talking about one of my favorite shows from my youth. I'm also very, very excited. <laughs> Literally the best. And it was such an underrated show at the time. So I'm glad that we are here to give it its proper due. Um, mm -hmm. Would love to point out that this is actually the 25th anniversary of the pilot for Felicity. And that's really exciting. Yay. And I think that means we were, what, three years old when it premiered? Yeah, that's accurate. We yeah. were babies. We are toddlers. <laughs> been watching it since uh sure, we'll go with that. in utero <laughs> <laughs> well we are we're super excited to talk about felicity um we're just three super fans of the show and as we said we think it's an underappreciated 90s gem um about a young woman who goes to new york city on a quest for self-discovery uh, so what we'll do is chat through every single episode and rewatch and hash out all the details the trials and tribulations of one felicity porter so let's dig into a little bit about the show itself. Um, so Felicity, who is played by Carrie Russell, follows her high school crush, Ben Covington, who's played by Scott Speedman, to the University of New York. She finds new friends, including resident, resident advisor Noel Crane, who's played by Scott Boley. The show was created by J.J. Abrams. And yes, that is J.J. Abrams of Star Trek and Star Wars and Lost. He's a huge name these days, but back in the 90s, he was just kind of getting started in his career. Uh, and co-created by Matt Reeves, who has also done things such as Cloverfield, Planet of the Apes, and The Batman. The show premiered on September 29th, 1998. So Felicity was definitely a different tone than their other work, hearing about their, their roster of films that they've worked on. Yeah, I didn't actually realize that Matt Reeves was a co-creator, and I didn't realize he was the one who just did the recent Batman movie. Oh. Yeah, it's pretty crazy. And I also think it's interesting, and we can talk about this later too, but I think it's interesting that two men co-created a show about a young woman, and I think normally that type of show might be tone deaf or not truly encapsulate what it's like to be a young woman. But I just love this show so much. And I'm really shocked that two men could have created this show because it just, mm -hmm. for me, really resonates to the, the college experience of a woman. Absolutely. And just looking at like Star Wars and Star Trek and kind of like this fantasy theme from J.J. Abrams, it is really surprising that he could create a show that like really explains the female experience in college. So yeah, he's awesome. Right, much more grounded in reality than some of his other works. So mm -hmm. relatable, for sure. Um, well, let's dig in a little bit into what life was like when Felicity premiered. So as I mentioned, um, it's September 29th, 1998. So 25 years ago, almost to the day. Uh, and it's a Tuesday. Fall has officially arrived and we're back at school. So again, she's going off to college in the fall and it uh, gives you really great cozy autumn vibes. A lot of people probably think of Gilmore Girls as their favorite fall rewatch, but I, for the longest time, have rewatched Felicity uh, in the fall when I went back to school. Um, Bill Clinton is the president of the United States, and the movie Rush Hour is at the top of the box office. Do you remember that that movie? <laughs> uh, can't say I remember much about it. But... Uh, Jackie Chan and Chris feels Doctor. 25 years old. <laughs> Uh, some other popular TV shows on the WB network where uh, Felicity actually premiered include Buffy the Vampire Slayer, Dawson's Creek, Charmed, and Seventh Heaven. Any of those on your watch list back in the day? Dawson's Creek. Oh, yeah. Dawson's Creek and Buffy, amazing. Yes. Charmed, Seventh Heaven, 
I don't know about those. But yeah, I loved Buffy. I watched it every Tuesday, I think it came on. Yeah, that was my show. I loved Buffy. Dawson's Creek was also uh, another favorite of mine that I, it was like appointment TV back in that day where you had to watch it when it was live. There was no on demand. Yeah. Um, and Dawson's Creek was always one that I made sure that I caught. And I feel <laughs> like there were some parallels where these are just mm -hmm. small town kids. They're wearing average clothes, but they talk <laughs> very maturely. They use mm. big words, talk really fast. And I feel like there's some parallels with Felicity. So mm. maybe it was like the late nineties. There was a lot of that vibe going on. Yeah. You don't see shows mm -hmm. like Dawson's Creek or Felicity or even Buffy even so Buffy, much anymore. Yeah. Uh, in the tech world, text messaging is starting to become more widespread, more widespread, definitely not <laughs> the uh, de facto form of communication. Um, and it can only be done if both the sender and the receiver are on the same cell network. So kids, look it that. up. We actually had... <laughs> <laughs> I didn't get text messages for the longest time. I think probably not until I was in college. Right, um, yeah. I won't reveal what, what date that was, but <laughs> um, we'll see in Felicity. There's a lot of rotary phones in the show. There, there were a Papers. lot of conflicts that you probably <laughs> could have solved with a quick text message, but it wasn't available back in the day. Uh, the CD is also quickly becoming the dominant format for music, and people are buying portable players such as the Discman. Um, consequently, sales of cassette tapes are continuing to decline. However, Felicity, we will see in the opening scene, she loves a cassette tape. Absolutely. I love that she uses cassette tapes, but I do remember using my Discman quite a bit at this time. <laughs> and it was always a huge deal when you got like the three second skip protection and it jumped to the 10 second skip protection. So you could like go on a run and hold your Discman <laughs> and it wouldn't skip. That was a big deal. <laughs> That was fancy. That's high tech stuff. <laughs> and on the fashion front, bright and metallic colors are all the rage, which was a big change from the darker grunge colors of the early 90s. Women are wearing maxi skirts, bell bottoms, knee boots, crop tops, tube tops, slip dresses, maxi coats, and platform shoes. And while we don't see a ton of the bright and metallic colors in Felicity, we definitely see a lot of the you know, crop tops, slip dresses, even some maxi coats. Mm -hmm. um, but we can also chat about the wardrobe a little later. It's a little bit different than some of the early 2000s, like McMansion, Paris Hilton type of fashion. It was very norm core. Um, so I'm, I'm interested to chat mm -hmm. with you about the wardrobe a little later on. Should we get into it? Let's get into it. Let's start talking about the pilot itself. Uh, so here's the episode description from IMDb. A high school graduate makes a momentous decision that puts her life on a much different track than either she or her parents envisioned. Okay, so JJ and Matt co-wrote the pilot and Matt directed the episode. The show has a 6.9 rating overall, but the pilot has an 8.1, which is pretty high for a pilot, especially, I think, right? It's pretty solid. And for, yeah, a, teen, so. for a teen show. I think the 6.9 rating overall could be higher, but that's all right. I, right. I, the show was critically acclaimed. Rotten Tomatoes even said this, Felicity elevates the sudsier elements of relationship dramas with its keen insight into burgeoning adulthood and the college experience with a captivating Carrie Russell shepherding viewers along the journey. And I've got to say, Carrie Russell just absolutely owns the role, is so believable and very mm -hmm. down to earth and she's endearing even though she's a little nerdy or dorky or awkward like she doesn't make it feel weird or creepy she's just very endearing in the role right it's not an over-the-top kind of presentation of nerdiness or dorkiness it's really grounded most of the roles that she's chosen since the beginning of her career i think she really chooses them meaningfully i don't feel like i've seen her in too many like silly shows or like you know that kind of like comedy type movies she's always very serious and picks her her roles meaningfully so i appreciate that although i think she was just in cocaine bear <laughs> <laughs> oh no i have i haven't seen it yet but i think she was on a press tour for cocaine bear very. which is definitely well, all right well, speaking about the past before cocaine bear i think but i think it i think that also got good ratings so it oh, okay. might be a good comedy yeah i still have to watch it <laughs> and interesting uh 
Carrie Russell actually got her start in the Mickey Mouse Club with the likes of Britney Spears and Ryan Gosling, Christina Aguilera, Justin Timberlake, that whole crew. Uh, I think she was a little bit older at the time than some of those other stars, but that's really where she kickstarted her career. But I would say that Felicity was definitely her breakout wow. role. She had a couple of like made for TV movie roles, and this was really her first leading role in a series or or movie. And um, Scott Foley was also on Dawson's Creek briefly, if anyone remembers. I do. He was <laughs> a dumb jack on season one. I think he like briefly dated Jen uh -huh. for an episode or yeah. two. Yeah. And I remember hating, hating his character on that show. So I'm really glad that I ended up liking Noel on Felicity. He's got range. And I think he, <laughs> he was in the film class with Dawson yes. and like didn't know anything about making movies and Dawson just wanted to take over the class, even though he wasn't a senior or something like that. But yeah, he does have range. Okay, and Amy Jo Johnson was the pink Power Ranger. Yeah, we'll Never. meet her character. We'll meet any <laughs> fans of that show. Never watched <laughs> it. I'm nodding my head. Yes. In third grade, I actually was the pink Power Ranger for Halloween. What? I was a, yeah, I was into the Power Rangers. I don't remember that. Yep. I don't think we I don't think we had the same class. So, well, okay. <laughs> yeah and then scott speedman who plays ben this was really his first role as well like he wasn't in anything super notable not saying he wasn't in anything good but um i would say for these top four cast members castmates that we are meeting in this first pilot episode this is their breakout roles across the board no one really had heard of them or knew about them um and i think it's again just a, an amazing i don't know it's amazing feat for the creators to find these amazing actors and actresses. Definitely. They work very well together. And they're all attractive. <laughs> <laughs> that doesn't hurt. <laughs> and they and they try to make them not as attractive in the show by dressing them down, but we all know they're all very attractive. There's nothing you can do to Scott Speedman <laughs> to make him less attractive. All right. So digging into the episode, we open on a silhouette of a young woman sitting on a bed by herself. And it's just such a beautiful shot. We meet Felicity and we hear the words, Dear Sally, for the first time, which will serve as our narration for the show. Um, we don't really see who or what Felicity is talking to yet, but she does start dictating what sounds like a letter to this Sally person. And here, here's what she has to say. Dear Sally, you should probably be sitting down for this. First of all, everything was perfectly fine. I mean, you know, on paper. High school was going exactly as it was supposed to. And from there, we jump to a flashback of her graduation with her narrating to Sally her, I guess, her 12 year plan. She's got the rest of her life <laughs> figured out, planned out. <laughs> um, and as she says, uh, her dad has planned out her whole life since she was a zygote. <laughs> <laughs> Which I found to be an amusing term instead of because most people would say since before I was born or since I was in the cradle still like, but still that medical leaning is even coming out even in the first few moments of the show is pretty funny. Yeah, I think this was a really good setup for us to kind of like get to know a little bit about her character, kind of like what she's interested in, um, what her family is like. It kind of just summed everything up really quickly. So we knew, you know, she's interested in medicine. She's very smart and she's got her life planned out for her. And the plan is she's going to go to Stanford for pre-med, Stanford for medical school, and then a four-year residency at one of Stanford's hospitals. So she's going to Stanford for the next 12 years of her life. If I don't, I don't know, Dr. Joe, how long does it take to <laughs> go through all of these years of, of medical school and residency? I feel like, yeah, that's the rest of her life is already planned out by her dad. Yeah. I mean, I'm not that kind of doctor, but that sounds about right to me. <laughs> it takes a long time. <laughs> Just ask Meredith Grey. Just <laughs> <laughs> All right. One of my favorite parts, we get to finally see Ben Covington. So we get a shot of Scott Speedman looking super hot in his graduation gown and cap. <laughs> Felicity talks about how she actually got to hold a pint of Ben's blood. And that's the closest they've ever gotten. That's as much as she's ever spoken to him. And again, somehow, Carrie Russell makes this sound endearing instead of creepy. <laughs> <laughs> yes. 
yeah they really they really walked a fine line between creep and endearing <laughs> she she pulls it off never talked to this guy held his blood <laughs> and uh we'll we'll soon see what she does for him right so she um goes up to him after graduation and she asks him to sign her yearbook which I feel like I never really did that in high school. Like I don't remember getting people to sign my high school yearbook as much as like middle school. Um, mm. But she asks him and then he sits down in the middle of the football field where their graduation happened and just writes and writes and writes. So he's sitting for what we think is could be like, you know, a half hour. Um, but here's and what she like, and she like plops down next yeah. to him too. It just kind of, yeah looking around twiddling her thumbs waiting for him to finish his it's novel awkward <laughs> yeah. i love what he wrote to her so i'll read it it says dear felicity here it goes i've watched you for four years always wondered what you were like what was going on in your mind all that time when you were so quiet just thinking drawing in your notebook i should have asked you but i never asked you so now four years later i don't even know you but i admire you well this makes me sound crazy i'm okay with that so take care of yourself. Love, Ben. P.S. I would have said keep in touch, but unfortunately, we were never in touch. This to me just shows already how deep Ben Covington can be. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> or, or, <laughs> or he knows how to say the right things to mm. get what he wants. Yeah, well, but he didn't even want her. Moment. He didn't even want her at yeah. that point. He just he was just being nice. Yeah. He's yeah, but he thoughtful. wants he wants affection and to be liked and adored. He's Mr. Popular. Yeah, but this is graduation. We'll he, was, that. he was never going to see her again. So yeah. Well, then what he was the point of keeping in touch? Exactly. <laughs> he's got deep thoughts. He's he's sensitive, maybe a little bit, yeah, just maybe, a little, yeah. maybe. It's just the beginning of his. Maybe there's more underneath that beautiful face. <laughs> <laughs> I will. I will concede that. I just think. Okay. <laughs> There's breadcrumbing happening here, and I don't right. like it. <laughs> anyway, she reads this, what he writes in her yearbook, and then she shouts after him, where, asking him where he's going to college. Um, he just says New York. So I guess we're supposed to just assume one of the big colleges in New York. Yeah, just the, like there's only one now. I mean, it's, <laughs> she knew exactly New York. where. University yeah. of New York. There's no other New York school. So, yeah, yeah, if you say that, you're supposed to know what it means. It's that one. <laughs> And he asks her back, how about you? And instead of saying, well, I'm going to Stanford for pre-med, then I'm going to go mm -hmm. to Stanford for medical school. And then for your resident, she says, that's pretty unclear. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so from graduation, now we jump to Felicity back at home, shuffling through the mail, and we see her opening up a letter from the University of New York. And apparently she has now changed her entire future to follow a boy that she doesn't even know who wrote something nice in her yearbook. Um, I'm not exactly sure how she got something in the mail from them after graduate. Like she had just decided it's at graduation that yeah, she's still wearing yeah, the so like, outfit. Yeah, I that so, to me. If you look in the scene, she's shuffling through a bunch of like acceptance letters from. Yeah, all kinds. I felt like it was old mail, and then she was just. So I back just took it as she was accepted there already. She just still, you know, she, so had, she had already applied there. That, that's that a little felt like a plot hole to something me. that happens later too that i was confused about but i could imagine why yeah why did she apply so far away if she well, was so dedicated to going to stand like she so didn't know he weird. was she didn't know ben was going there until he said that mm -hmm. at graduation so then for her to be like oh yeah i made some calls how would you already have something in the mail but it's fine plot holes happen. I, I feel like she probably just had a lot of backup schools like Cast a wide net. To do. safety so, schools <laughs> we're assuming the university of new york is like the big main university so maybe she applied to all those places just 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 to do it good for her that makes sense <laughs> <laughs> good job so she gets this acceptance letter from well what we're assuming is an acceptance letter from university of new york and she sits down to chat with her dad and her mom's around somewhere uh, but her dad, Dr. Porter, who I think is arguably one of the scariest TV dads ever. I like can't think of one that is scarier than Dr. Porter. I've got some. Moment. I've got some in mind. <laughs> oh, you do? Okay, because like every scene he's in, I'm terrified. Really? Like I have a pit in my stomach for Felicity. I yeah, I'm scary. I found him. 
you know, a little bit having a big reaction, but they also did at her yeah. graduation because she says like, oh, my parents had a typically understated reaction and they're like throwing their heads back. They're laughing. They're smiling. Mm-hmm. So I think they're just emote, like really big emotions. I don't, I didn't find them scary though. That's true. He's, he is not pleased. No, he's not. That she is not going to Stanford. <laughs> but I'll throw this out there. Dylan's dad on Beverly Hills 90210, he's pretty scary. And I think he's way scarier than Dr. Porter. So I'm just going to leave That's that there for you. I haven't seen yeah, that show. Oh, we need oh, to no. do that next. Okay, so, <laughs> so only the mob boss is scarier <laughs> than Dr. Porter. <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> But basically, Dr. Porter is not supporting her decision, um, her last minute decision to not go to Stanford and now go to UNY. He's going to make her pay her own way. He's not going to support her financially, emotionally, physically, any any of the ways. Um, <laughs> any of the ways. She's going to, any of the ways. And she's going to have to get student loans like most millennials out there now instead of having her dad pay for college. And there's a point in their conversation that to me just felt so realistic. Um, Mm. Dr. Porter says, I worked this hard so you wouldn't have to go through what I did. And Felicity responds, no, dad, you made it so that I'd have to go through exactly what you did. And she almost looks surprised by herself that she Mm -hmm. said that. Mm -hmm. So I felt like this was the first inkling that maybe this decision to go to UNY is not about Ben entirely. Mm -hmm. Um, She was kind of shocked at herself that she stood up to her parents and made this decision. Um, And you just get the feeling that she's never really spoken up for herself, whether it's her parents or anyone else in her life. You know, we don't really meet her friends or anything else um, about her life in Palo Alto, but I just got the feeling that she's just kind of gone along with everything that her parents wanted in her life. And this was the first time she was really taking a stand. Mm-hmm. I agree. I got I got goosebumps when you read that, when you were just uh, recapping that. I was like, yeah, that was powerful. That was a great moment. Absolutely. But uh, on the other flip side, like if she had been going along with everything her parents had been saying for all these years, then no wonder her dad was shocked mm-hmm, that mm-hmm. this was happening because mm-hmm. she- she you know she wanted to go to stanford before this point she wanted to do medicine and and kind of do what her dad did so i guess i can kind of see his big big reaction um maybe he didn't say it the right way yeah but i think the yeah. size of the reaction was kind of congruent to the size of the abrupt kind of change like this because this is yeah. such a shift in her character as far as we know from this point i would be very surprised too if i was if i was her dad or yeah. mom like wait what <laughs> And that it seemed just so abrupt. Yes, yes. You know, as far as we know, she's never said anything about maybe I want to go to New York or here yeah. or major in in English. Like she's never really given any other mm-hmm. indication that that wasn't exactly what she wanted to. So after that conversation with her parents, um, we are transported back to her dorm room of her talking to Sally, whoever she is. Um, and we see that she's actually recording a cassette tape to Sally and sending it to Santa Fe. So that's the next little breadcrumb of information that we get about Sally in the episode. Um, so she finishes up her, her tape to Sally and now is going about her day, getting her student ID photo taken, where who does she run into? immediately. It must be a very small school, despite being so well known to just go by New York. Uh, But she runs into Ben Covington. And Melissa, I'm sure you have thoughts on their interaction here. Oh my gosh. Okay. Well, first of all, he looks- I know I do. He looks- (laughs) So she's- With his little backpack just on one shoulder. (laughs) Well, actually, I love that he's the one who sees her first- and he's like, oh my gosh, what? Hey. And then she has this cute little fake reaction of, oh, I totally forgot you were going here. Just like, you know, <laughs> laughing it off. Like, what, Ben? We've all we've all been there. Plan to run into someone and be like, oh my God, what are you doing here? Yeah, yeah. Um, and then, of course. But I love that he says that, wow, that's so yeah. unbelievable. It's like, <laughs> yeah, it really is. <laughs> literally you know, no idea in that moment. i'm shocked they didn't have her yeah. like kind of forcefully create like a scene where she would run into him like i am surprised that he is the one that like spotted her it happened yeah. organically yeah. <laughs> so we're all excited we're like amped up this is it they're gonna like have this cool reunion and then of course some girl comes up to ben and they kiss 
Um, so it's like a punch to the gut. And he tries to introduce this new girl, and then he doesn't remember Felicity's name. Yeah. Another another gut punch. Oh, come on. So, yeah, that's kind of like the whole fantasy is dead for her. It's just like soul-crushing. This guy that she came all the way to New York for, you know, has some floozy on his arm. (laughs) (laughs) And again, I mean, Carrie Russell's just such a great actress. She says so much with just a face, with just a look. Mm -hmm. And in that moment, too, you can just see her realize, like, what the F did I just do? Mm -hmm. I came to New York across Mm -hmm. the country, changed my whole life plan, and he doesn't even remember my name. And now he's macking on some other girl, too. Mm -hmm. I mean, wow. And then that look is cemented in her student ID photo forever. Yeah. (laughs) And here she was just worried about her hair. Yeah. Right. (laughs) So after that awful, awful run in with Ben Covington, she goes to, I'm assuming he's a guidance counselor based on their conversations. Uh Um, We never really learned his name, I don't think. Um, But she's clearly distraught. There's a little wobble in her voice, like she's on the brink of tears. And she's just explaining to the counselor that she hasn't had time to look over the class schedules and just needs some time to adjust. You can tell she's really waffling about her being at Mm -hmm. University of New York. Um, And the counselor reveals to her that her parents called him. And he understands that New York can be overwhelming, the city and the college, university, excuse me. Uh, And he said that New York is best suited for the independently minded student. And unfortunately, her parents implied she wasn't necessarily that. And that is another gut punch. Like, she's just really taking it from all sides in this first episode here. But that to me was a huge, a huge yikes. Like that Mm -hmm. your parents don't even believe in you, that you can do this. Right. On the flip side, though, she hadn't really been that independent she hadn't been yeah because she'd been going along with the program your parents <laughs> well, um, I, I, I was not expecting a uh, doctor and mrs porter like sympathizing episode here <laughs> <laughs> i guess the last time i sympathized your with them. team ben but... team dr porter <laughs> in their defense like yeah she has gone along with pretty much everything they've wanted for her for her whole life so I can see you even see that. Yeah. Yeah. Heather even pointed out when she said, no, you made it so I'd have to do exactly yeah. what you did. Um, that being the first time that she stood up. Yeah. So of course they're like, where is this coming from? Who is she? We don't know the side of her. So yeah, she, she really hasn't let her independence kind of come to the surface until right now. Right. And then um, she hands the counselor some artwork, some drawing samples, just so he could like see some of her interests, interests outside of medicine. So I thought that was um, interesting that she had this artistic side, usually Mm -hmm. with like doctors and medicine, you don't always think of that part. And and this is also a peek into maybe there is another path, Mm -hmm. the outside of medicine and pre-med. Okay, so then we move on to an English class lecture where Felicity is sitting a few rows behind Ben and she's staring longingly at him and kind of crying to herself. Of course (laughs) you I was like, again, this is such a small school. If Uh. that... Oh, ID pictures were running into each other. We have the same classes yeah. already. Well, you know, those gen ed classes in the beginning, <laughs> you're going to see the same handful of people over and over again, I think. So it's like I could almost buy that, you know, like the freshman classes because all the other like special classes are taken. So like you're going to kind of get lumped in. But still, yeah, it was kind of convenient. <laughs> and we don't really know what Ben is studying. So it also makes sense where a pre-med student might just take English 101. And so would he, if we don't really know what his major is or if he doesn't really have a direction yet. So the student sitting next to her passes her a note to ask if she's okay. And I think this is so adorable because the options are no and I will be instead of no Mm -hmm. and yes. And I think that's just such a nice little nuance to the writing and um, to the care that the writers put into the show. And also she's crying. So obviously she's not okay, right? (laughs) Obviously, yes. Yes is not an option. It really is not. 
But also remember passing notes in school? Again, kids, That's look funny. it up. You had to like write down what you wanted to tell your friends in class and, and mm -hmm. pass it sometimes across yeah. multiple rows of other students and yep. just trust that it would yeah, get to the person that you wanted it to get to. There was even like a special way to fold them or you had them like all wrapped up together, <laughs> secret. Yeah. Like a little envelope kind of. Yeah. Those, those were the days. <laughs> So we move on from the class and they go have, um, they have a little laugh, you know, while they're kind of joking about the professor. And then we see them next in the cafeteria getting lunch together. And that's where we first meet Julie Emmerich. So they bond over their weird roommates and their fears about college so far. Just that whole, you know, adjusting to their freshman year experience. Which, it, But also like that's a really cute interaction and yeah. I feel like that is how you start to make friends in college when you don't know anyone. It's just like one little interaction, like, okay, I'm going to attach myself to this one person that I've sort of hit it off with and become best friends with them because you're all in this. Yeah. Hey, bestie. Yeah, like you're all in the same boat. And I love that they were able to kind of bond over their weird roommates and some of the things that were happening, like getting on the wrong subway and taking it an hour past your stop and, and, <laughs> and other situations like that. So, I mean, well, yeah, as relatable. we get further on in the season, I will share all of my thoughts on Julie. I'm not a huge Julie fan, even though yeah. I, I <laughs> love the Pink Power Ranger. Amy Jo Johnson's awesome. I just really don't like Julie as a character, but mm -hmm. I thought this moment was really sweet, how they met and became friends. Yeah, I'm right there with you. And of course, who does Felicity see across, who across shows the up? cafeteria? <laughs> ben. <laughs> it's Ben. <laughs> For her oh. to longingly glance at again. So she grabs Ben to go talk, and they're standing in this beautifully lit stairwell. <laughs> <laughs> and she starts this conversation by saying, I don't want you to feel weird, which obviously this is going to be a very awkward, terrible, oh, weird Felicity. conversation. Whenever you start a convo with, I don't want you to feel weird, when does it that like put somebody at ease? <laughs> yeah. And I was super surprised that she just spilled the beans she tells him that she came to new york because of him um and the whole time he's just looking at her with this super awkward face um it's hard to explain to smile through it like yeah. okay not my, like not my favorite ben face <laughs> yes lots of squinting um <laughs> So she tells him about like high school and how she had all these intense feelings for him and saying how she realizes now it's crazy and she's past it right and that it's not about him anymore so ben just kind of laughs and he's awkward and he says honestly i'm flattered and then he very graciously <laughs> accepts this information i'd say <laughs> He, he took it really well. What else could you do when someone tells you they've been in love with you for years and you don't really know them? And you don't remember her name. Like, run. <laughs> <laughs> like, hey, um, remember that time I held your blood four years ago? <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> uh, and then they decide to just be friends. I, I love that Felicity said that. Like, can we just be friends? As mm -hmm. if, like, he was proposing something else. Right. <laughs> Right. Yeah. Cause he doesn't even, yeah, know her name at this point. Like he knows who she was obviously because of what he wrote in her yearbook, but I mean, it would be a step up, a level up to be friends at that point. Cause they exactly. are strangers really right now. Oh, good for her. <laughs> she still has her eye on the prize. <laughs> well, yes. Felicity says she's past it now, but next we find out that part of her financial aid is being a part of work study, which if your dad is a doctor and has gone to Stanford and you were going to go to Stanford, you probably have some money and you're not going to get approved for work study if you have money. Like that's just, it's not going to happen. So I think that's another plot hole. Um, yeah. She should have just said she got a job there because work study, that's not happening. Mm -hmm. But we find out that she works in the admissions office and we see her reading some documents like Neil crouched down at these file cabinets, uh, reading some documents. And she said that it's against the rules to read these documents. We don't really know what though she is reading yet. So then we cut to one of my favorite scenes, just because it's funny, just because it's funny. Um, so now Felicity's back in her dorm room with the door wide open, mm -hmm. okay? She's not like door closed, locked. She's It's wide open. She's talking on a real old phone with a cord. 
I don't know if it was a rotary phone or if you punch the buttons, but it's like an old, old phone um, wearing what I think can only be described as like a dirty dishcloth <laughs> colored tank dress. I don't know if that's supposed to be like lingerie. Well, like a yeah. slip. Like it looked more little, like a slip, like, like a, a nightgown type but of thing. But it was like, yeah. It was like thick t-shirt material. Any, it was just, I was like, girl, what are you wearing? Mm -hmm. Yeah, it was, <laughs> it was odd. And she's talking to her dad again, you know, I roll conversation with her dad. Like I want to get off the phone, just trying to stall. So we see, uh, this adorable floppy yeah. brown haired boy standing at her door, peeking in, he's holding his laundry basket. And once Felicity gets off the phone, she hangs up and she kind of turns and sees him standing in the door and gets startled. And they both kind of freak out at each other. And she like, again, covers herself up with the phone. That's why I'm like, do you think this is lingerie? Like, hun, you're yeah. fully covered. Like uh -huh. you're wearing a dress. It was, that was just the funniest moment. Cause I'm like, again, this just shows that she was so <laughs> sheltered mm -hmm. as, uh, as a teen and a kid growing up that like, this is some big scandalous moment because she's right. in a tank dress. Um, <laughs> she may have had some vulnerability too, just coming off the phone with her parents. Like if, you know, she's been having these, this discord with them and she's a little bit more in a vulnerable space that could have contributed to it. I wonder. That's true. That's a good point. Okay. Um, so yeah, they're both kind of startled at each other. And we find out that this is Noel Crane, who is her RA and he was stopping by to say, yo, which is a very 1998 greeting uh, and that he's and that he's like the floor shrink if she ever needs anything. And I think it's a very adorable exchange. And there are maybe some flirty vibes in the looks that they're giving each other. But we all know that she has a torch for Ben. So, you know, Noel, Noel might have some feelings that are unrequited. We will mm -hmm. see. But basically, she takes him up on his offer to be the shrink right away and knocks on his door and goes into his room um, and explains what she was reading in the admissions office. Apparently, Felicity has read and photocopied Ben's application essay, where he reveals that his older brother had died of cancer. And his essay talked a little bit about dealing with that event in his life. And so immediately... Felicity throws Noel in the friend zone and asks him dating advice about a guy <laughs> that she's in love with. Uh, she asks Noel if it's possible to just be friends with someone that she has immoderate feelings for, uh, another big word, um, or is she just doomed to be in love and hurt forever? But Noel, of course, says you can just be friends, give it a month, you'll settle in. Like everything feels really heightened right now because you're in college, you're starting something new, everything is new. Um, and you know, he's saying like, give it some time and you'll settle in and, and you'll just be friends. Um, but I think he probably has some ulterior motives uh -huh, here. Uh -huh. Absolutely. All right. I'll give it to you, Heather. Noel is super cute. I'm not anti Thank you. Noel. I, I like I know. Noel a lot. I love that he's the RA. So he's like the one person that people on the floor can go to for advice. And I love that she goes to him immediately. It just kind of like sets up their their friendship or their relationship where she's already comfortable coming to him, telling him about this kind of horrible thing that she's done by reading Ben's essay, which this just kind of sets in my mind that Felicity is a little bit crazy. <laughs> well, yeah, that was um, that was kind of an extreme thing to do. <laughs> That's kind of a big deal. I mean, she already came to to this university because of a guy. And now she's like completely disregarding the rules and reading his essay. So, yeah, she's a little bit nuts right now. A little bit. But also, <laughs> what was her motive? Like, what did she think she was going to find out about him? Like, I wouldn't, if there was a guy like that, I wouldn't just think, I know, I'll read his, his, his admissions essay and find out what. Like, did she just anything? Feel she didn't know him at all. To him? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. I, I, I was just like, what was the, the goal here? Um, yeah. Well, I feel yeah, like it's to get I guess, insight. When you yeah. have a crush on someone, you just, I don't know all the things. <laughs> it's like now we would Google someone we were like yeah. interested in to find what would come up. It's kind Go of like all their Googling, social media. Put in the all 90s. The posts. <laughs> yeah, that's all she had. That's all she had to work with. She couldn't gotcha. Google him. Yeah, yeah. No, that's a great. You're point, right. So. She was, but it's still sketchy. Was... It's still a little sketchy thing to do. <sighs> and she could get fired. <laughs> Among other but yeah, things, you're right. she probably doesn't. She probably doesn't care. 
and at that point just wanted to feel closer to him or learn anything and everything. So you're right. Yeah. You couldn't just Google and stalk someone on Facebook or Instagram back in the day. You had, you had their to stalk them proper back essays. in the day. Yeah. <laughs> you had to stalk them in person in a real tangible kind of way. <laughs> you had to go undercover and look in the file cabinets. Oh, yeah. Man. File cabinets, like touch actual paper. That's amazing. <laughs> All right, so the next scene, we're back in her English class, and the professor is handing back papers, and Felicity, we assume, is getting a good grade, and then the professor hands Ben's paper back, and he looks pretty upset. So we cut to a scene where he's asking her for help, but he wants to make sure she's okay with it and it wouldn't be weird. Um, and of course, she says yes. Yeah. <laughs> of course. <laughs> like, oh, I'm totally okay. So, uh -huh. yeah. So, um, I mean, who wouldn't if you had a crush on someone and they asked you for, for tutoring help or whatever? Who wouldn't say? Yep. <laughs> But, but this is but this is where I would again go back to like Ben knows how to get what he wants because how could he not know that that would be weird like he just wants help and is willing to ignore the fact that this girl like a day ago told him I was in love with you in high school mm -hmm. I have all these feelings like I get that she wasn't upfront and she should say no I'm not cool with it mm -hmm. but he also has to know like it was a day ago this all happened also he is also new to new york he also moved across the country from california and he also doesn't know anybody at the university so why wouldn't he reach out to somebody familiar to get some help for something he might feel vulnerable about maybe he doesn't feel great about being a dum dum you know and having to ask for help so of course he's going to ask someone who's already shown some kindness to him and yeah i think i i mean it's a little bit outrageous but it's also like who else does he know there to ask for help thank you like but again that's his feelings because he doesn't want to meet someone new or go to the ta or buy a cliff's notes whatever he needs to do to figure it out he's going to use felicity to get the help even though he knows that she's in love with him yeah but he's also and a guy to her to set the boundary <laughs> too like if she really felt like i mean she's using that opportunity as much as he is he's using yeah, the opportunity 100%. to get some help and she's using it to be like, hmm, maybe I can get my foot in the door and see what happens. So she's also there. It's a mutual kind of using that's happening, I think. <laughs> I agree. She did also didn't respond in the no. best way to the situation. And let's all remember, these are college aged people. Yeah, they're young. They're she's still only 17. Not, they're still not adults, like in the real world. Frontal lobes aren't developed. Your not frontal lobes aren't developed. I mean, I'm a grown ass woman and I still don't handle these situations the best. So <laughs> I get it. I just don't love how Ben treats Felicity most of the time, at least in this person. All, all right. right. All right. <laughs> so they start no, no, no spoilies. They start studying together in her dorm room. Um, and this scene is one of my favorites in the episode. They're sitting on the floor studying and Ben asks Felicity why she didn't go to parties very much in high school. She kind of responds, I didn't exactly win most popular. Wait, Ben did. <laughs> of course, because he's super hot and friendly. Yeah. And, yeah. and I love that though, um, because he he's kind of embarrassed about it. He puts his head down and his hand yeah. a little bit and kind of like yeah. laughs it off and is like, those things are stupid. So he's not yeah. leaning into that persona, really. He's not, he's not that guy. He's deeper. Oh, yeah. That showed me that at least he wasn't a bully in high school. Like he at least seemed like one of those really popular guys, but like who was just nice to everyone or at least wasn't a total D-bag to everyone. Mm -hmm. Absolutely. Point for Ben. <laughs> <laughs> All right. so we get I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Are we are we keeping score? We Should I start know. a scoreboard? <laughs> All right. There's a knock at the door, and of course it's Noel. Um, he very sweetly gives her a gift, and it's like a little pocket guide to the New York subway system. Very kind, um, and I love the looks he's giving to Ben as this is happening. Like kind of like who's like, this who, guy? Who's this? Definitely happening. looks him up and down. Like what? Yeah. <laughs> Who is that? Mm -hmm. And I will say, like, I'm obviously a Noel stan, but also, Noel, like, you have no claim uh -uh, on her. None. So, you know, <laughs> we do see a little bit that there is some jealousy. Yes, from like, so I will, I will that point that from? out for sure. He, he needs to improve that a yeah, little bit. Absolutely. Yeah. Well, well, don't get me started on the future episodes. Okay. Uh, <laughs> all right. Well, so, uh, he awkwardly, like, leaves and closes the door. And then I love that he barges in again. 
and there's like this awkward silence and then Felicity's like okay this is Ben Ben this is Noel so they kind of like get to know each other but this is one of my favorite Ben moments because he has this such a cute sly smile (laughs) like he knows something weird is going on with Noel and like he can recognize maybe Noel likes her but his cute little sly smile is my like hottest moment of the episode for Ben it's <laughs> at 21 horrible. minutes and 26 seconds if anybody wants to look it up <laughs> look it melissa, has, melissa has it <laughs> has it screenshotted that's her computer background it's like you're saying i think scott speedman is really good at expressing like those little like shy or like you know kind of embarrassed moments with his face so that that was my favorite ben moment of the episode love it and then Noel barges in Again. the third time just to annoy them. And that was probably one of my favorite moments <laughs> because he was laughing at himself. He knew he was being kind of yeah. douchey and like barging in on them. And then he just kind of made it cute and funny at the end. Um, I was annoyed by it. I didn't think it yeah. was cute. It was too much. It was a little too <laughs> much for me. I liked it because, yeah, he then turned it into a joke. But I get it. Yeah. <laughs> So then they want to study again, uh, but Felicity already has plans with Julie. So then she suggests to Ben, well, why don't we all just study together? I'm sure Julie will be okay with it. Well, Felicity then meets up with Julie. They're checking their mail or something in the dorm. And she asks Julie if it's okay for Ben to come along to wherever they were going that night. And Julie gets quiet, super passive aggressive. Mm -hmm. She just kind of like says um you know what i think i'm good i don't need to study you guys go ahead and do whatever it's very and confusing felicity is obviously con- yeah she felicity was confused like what you said that you desperate you needed help and we were yeah we were gonna do this what's going on and julie says well she just didn't want to be the fifth wheel and asks her like what's going on with you and ben are you dating felicity says no 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 we're just friends we went to high school together And then Julie was like, oh, okay, cool. You're just friends. You went to high school together. Great. And so they decide they're all going to hang out and study together that night. And I just thought that was a weird interaction, especially from Julie to like, is she never going to be friends with a couple? It just, there was some weird red flag there to me that maybe something has happened in the past where she's been left behind by a, a friend who, you know, spent, started spending all their time with a boyfriend. I don't know, but it was just a really um awkward comment from julie to just up and get so cold like that so quickly yeah Uh, to me it kind of seemed like she was trying to figure out if if you know ben was available like she already had these attractive attractions to ben so maybe she was just like trying to figure out what was going on for for her own sake Mm. that's what i big mood shift with it it really to me dr joe (laughs) Like was picking up on some yes, way in. abandonment vibes, like, you know, fear of abandonment, fear of rejection type of stuff. And I think because it was such a like a visceral reaction, like it just like her tone and her, her presence shifted so much so fast. It seemed like there was some other stuff going on besides like, hmm, I wonder if Ben's available. I think there's some other stuff going on underneath there. All right. <laughs> All right. <laughs> That's what I'm here for. <laughs> All right. Yeah, I guess we don't we don't really see Julie interact with Ben at all in the episode. Like this is the first time we've seen them all three together. So yeah, I don't know that we know how much she knows Ben, if she likes him or not. But I, I do think the abandonment, that's a good point, Joe, because it but that's the thing. Like Felicity didn't even say, Hey, I can't go out tonight. I'm gonna hang out with Ben. Like she just wanted him to come along and, and hang out. And to me, if you're brand new in college, you might want to make yeah, the more as the merrier as possible and meet as yeah, and meet as many people. So I yeah, I thought she took it to a kind of an extreme. Mm-hmm. So that was that was a red flag for me in the episode where I'd be nervous. Yeah, it was a bit of an um, overreaction moving forward. So then we we skip to later that night with the three of them hanging out at a bar, um, bar pub grill. Um, they're joking around and Julie gets up and I think she goes to the bathroom. So it's just Ben and Felicity left together and you know, they're still smiling and chatting and all of a sudden Ben gets a little cagey and asks Felicity if she meant what she said about wanting to just be friends. <laughs> she looks a little and bit you can hopeful. See Felicity. <laughs> oh man, Felicity's face again. She just <laughs> turns it like you can see like, oh, like, she gets a little yeah. excited. Like, what were you thinking? Oh, yeah, I meant it. <laughs> Unless, yeah, what are you, what are you thinking now? Should we get the check in, get out of here? Like she's ready <laughs> at, she's at a moment's notice to, to do whatever Ben Covington wants. <laughs> yes. 
<laughs> but unfortunately, he's kind of into Julie, he says, and he's just making sure that it's okay with Felicity. Again, he's got to know it's not okay, but he's doing it anyway because that's what he wants. She's obviously not fine, uh, but of course, she continues to say that she's okay and fine and pushes it way down deep and represses her feelings. So they're a little bit weird, but then he asks her, well, what do you think? What do you think Julie thinks about me? And Felicity says, I think she thinks you're wonderful, which is just so sad. Mm. I feel so bad for her. I know. And this is another gut punch. So sad. Yeah. But in Ben's defense, mm-hmm. she said the Ben apologist. Men men aren't as like observant to this stuff. Like she said, let's be friends. I'm okay. So he took her for her word. Yeah. He is. Yeah. yeah. And he did check in. I guess men thoughtful. are just dense. Well, <laughs> he was not, I mean, he was thoughtful enough to at least ask, like, hey, is this going to be okay? Like, he didn't just do it. I mean, if he was truly right. a low down, dirty, like, I'm going to get what I'm going to get, he wouldn't have even bothered asking her, like, hey, like, did you mean it? Is that going to be weird? Is that going to be okay? I think that was thoughtful and considerate of him to run it by her. Because I don't Absolutely. think. Uh, I don't think she gets that courtesy from everybody else all the time. Probably not. Yeah. <laughs> but I still think he has to know what the answer really is. And yeah. he's just, he's just, no, he's just, it's a, yeah, it's a courtesy. I don't know. We don't really know what would have happened if he had asked her if it was okay. And she said, actually, no, I'm not okay with it. We don't really know what would have happened. Um, That's true. So I can't, I can't assume. Right. But I don't love that he's doing this <laughs> and i don't love that she went along with it if she genuinely deeply yeah deeply, but i mean yeah. it so i think she is open to them having a friendship because that's more than she's ever had with them before they've barely had a conversation in you know their four years of high school so i think maybe on some level she is okay with it really like okay that's not the answer i was hoping for you know i thought maybe he's gonna ask me out but okay fine we really are going to be friends and maybe that's maybe that's enough for her for now for now well, we'll see <laughs> yeah exactly yeah, we'll, we'll- Later in this episode, still following this hangout, Felicity goes back to her dorm, very sullen, and sits in the dark, gorgeous lighting in this dorm room. It's so dim, yet there's like a very warm light coming from some of the surrounding little table lamps. And her roommate, who we haven't met yet, walks in and we meet Megan for the first time. She's kind of rummaging around in her closet. She's dressed up in this very goth outfit. And Felicity introduces herself. Are you Megan? I'm Felicity. I'm your roommate. And Megan just kind of looks at her in disgust, like, ugh, who's this nerd? And leaves. <laughs> just glares at her. <laughs> glares and walks right back out the door. And to me, this was really Felicity's rock bottom. Like, she has now reached her breaking point. She's been stuffing all of these feelings down. Maybe this was, like, the last shred of hope. Like, hopefully my roommate ends up being nice or cool. And now she's just rejected her. Mm. And she cannot act fine anymore about moving moving to New York for Ben. And he's now going after her new friend. And her roommate sucks. And her parents think that she's weak and can't handle herself in New York. I think it all just came to a head now at this point. So Definitely. Now, of course, is the best best time to go confront ben right. the crazy her craziest moment of the episode <laughs> yeah that was yeah <laughs> so she goes to his apartment and wants to talk and she kind of just lays it all out there she says how could you write that in my yearbook and in this moment i am team felicity somebody's gotta be <laughs> well i i like that she wasn't embarrassed and she just kind of you know might as well say all this stuff since she's contemplating you know leaving um and she says every action has consequences it's like physics ben super cute trying to be all adorable she says well i never took physics and she's <laughs> like no 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 um, don't do that you say yeah. things like that and you get out of it so yeah i am all about felicity in this moment because she's finally calling him out on all of his bull well there hasn't been a lot of bull to call him out on really i mean she's she's laying a lot a lot's tumbling out again because she's been rejected from many different angles at this point so i don't think this is all for him i think he's getting he's in the blast zone of this coming out though um and then she shouts you made me (laughs) fall for you which oh Oh, boy honey oh Oh, girl that's not embarrassing at all (laughs) you know and then she even spells that she knows all about his brother from reading that essay so ben's super angry 
obviously. As it should be. I'm shocked. <laughs> How did you read my essay? Yeah. Yikes. And he kind of, you know, says all he did was be nice to her and she's acting crazy, which she was a little bit. She was. That was really extreme stuff. I mean, she really didn't know much about him at all. So, yeah, you can't really say you made me fall for you when yeah. you really haven't had a serious conversation with this person ever. And he's right. Yeah. All how can, he you, did be, how was, can you be yeah. in love with someone? Yeah. yeah, he was just nice to her. That's all he did. <laughs> she followed him across the country. All right. And then, of course, the big drama who <laughs> comes and interrupts their fight. But Julie, she's putting on her coat um, and just says, hey, and kind of slides just past them um, and leaves. My big issue here is which why did she choose that moment to leave like right in front of <laughs> of right them like while they're having this heated moment like why yeah. did she choose to reveal that at that particular time because that's just so humiliating i think yeah. for felicity because now she's gotten i mean that was her friend too so now she's like her roommate sucks this ben thing's not working out her parents think she's weak and now julie too it's like yeah. what who else is gonna like let her down this is nuts I think that was kind of calculated on Julie's part. I think that was kind of messed yeah. up. Why didn't she just stay hidden? Yeah, it she didn't know. Unless he was coming into the she, apartment or anything. No. Like, go into his room, give them some yeah. privacy. Like, I can understand wanting to give them a little privacy, but interrupting their and fight. Walking and walking between like, them. Leading yeah. Right between them. Yeah. That was but super. It's just drawing more for. attention to what was going on there. It's like, that definitely could have had been a conversation that they had the next day. Like, hey, like, just so you know. I was over there or not tell her at all and just you know stop <laughs> stop yeah. seeing ben it was just so such a weird way to handle that moment on julie's part and just saying like hey and then bouncing <laughs> ridiculous right. not even not saying even, i'm not sorry even, not, yeah or like i i don't i didn't want to get in the middle of this or i want to mm -hmm. give you some privacy again like just say something they had some privacy if she would have just stayed her behind inside the apartment like they already had privacy to me it was almost an admission of guilt like oops i know i did something wrong i'm gonna leave now mm -hmm. that, yeah, yeah it was a really awkward it's so obnoxious moment. and then felicity's just dumbstruck and mm. leaves stunned <laughs> she's just like that's it i'm leaving <laughs> i'm getting out of this state i'm done <laughs> So she goes back to the guidance counselor I'm talking about going back to California after everything that's happened. Um, and it almost to me sounds like she's convincing herself that leaving would be the best decision. She's yeah. giving all these reasons saying, oh, and my parents, it's great timing because my parents are actually coming on Sunday. So really like this is the best thing. You know, I can take a semester off and then go to Stanford and be no farther off from my goal. Like she's talking herself into it. The guidance counselor says... Like, hey, I did look at your portfolio and you might be a great doctor someday, but you're already an artist. And I thought that was just a really sweet way to encourage her. Like, no one wants to be told what to do and what decision they should make, but I thought it was just a really encouraging moment. Like, hey, you could have a future here. You could do something outside of what your parents think that you should be doing. It wasn't a forceful, you know, do this, don't do that. Mm -hmm. But I thought that was a really sweet moment. possibilities. Yeah. So then we're back in her dorm room and Felicity is packing up. So it looks like she still made it a point to leave. And Ben shows up at her door and hands her a small package that was outside of her door. And we learn that that is a cassette tape back from Sally. We find out that Sally was her French tutor whose fiance was killed before their wedding. And she couldn't really deal with the grief and made a new start, moved away to Santa Fe. But Felicity says that she feels like she could talk to Sally the way that she couldn't really talk to anyone else. And so she records these tapes to Sally and then Sally talks back to her. So we that's kind of how we hear that, you know, their friendship came to be, but we don't actually meet Sally. This is just the narration of the episodes. So we hear Sally's tapes uh, back to Felicity at the end of every episode. So we'll chat a little bit more about Sally's tape back to her later. So Ben um, asks her if they can talk and they, of course, go up to the roof of their or Felicity's dorm. Um, and there's this beautiful I, view of New York, like 
it makes which I don't think is allowed in college because yeah I wouldn't even know how to do that I'm thinking about my dorm and I wouldn't even have a a clue how to even get up to the roof emergency exit signs and sirens would go off like there's no way like you can't even open your windows all the way in a dorm room because (laughs) bad things can happen so I don't think that would be allowed but it's a beautiful it's a beautiful shot (laughs) absolutely it's art when you see that you're like how does she how could she she ever leave? leave yeah yeah exactly it's perfect so uh ben reveals that he never even had a brother um and he lied on his admission essay which is really interesting it's kind of our first look at at ben's character a little bit but i like that he wanted to tell her the truth he says it's because she provokes him just by the way she looks at him (laughs) i see heather shaking her head you said heather (laughs) she's very expressive with her face so that's possible i think (laughs) she can provoke somebody with no features i think this is probably true but again if she has these deep feelings for him are i think men are they just really this dense where they don't understand the impact that their words have like if someone were to tell me that i provoke them just by looking at them how i mean i'm shopping for wedding dresses 10 minutes later right exactly (laughs) it's like let's let's pick a date yeah when are we gonna make this official this is spring fall wedding what colors palettes are we gonna use yeah yeah but i agree i do like that in this in this moment it's a very quick way for us to learn a little bit more about his background and his family too yeah i mean he basically says he wanted to go to new york to get as far away from his parents and his family um so he ended up lying to get in um, he's pretty desperate yeah so we don't know all the details of his family life and everything yet but um it kind of gives us a glimpse into ben and and his motivation and that and that they're kind of similar right. in why they chose right. New York. Like they wanted to get away from their life. And so this might be there's, uh there's some common ground yeah, there. A common, mm-hmm. Yeah, a common ground that they might bond over in the future. Um so yeah he tells her he's sorry he's not who she thought he was. And the next part I love because Felicity kind of opens up and says that she's never gotten to make a substantial choice in her life. So she may have said that Ben was the reason she came to New York, but um She's kind of realizing that that was just an excuse and she, you know, kind of admits that it was stupid and she's going to regret it. But yeah, it was just kind of a nice moment where she opens up to and kind of admits that it's not all about him. And again, I, I'm very surprised in this direction from co-creators who are men, because I think what we've seen a lot in the media and their portrayals of women are that they're very frivolous or yeah, it's about dating and finding a man. And I like that this was very obvious in the pilot. Like we think she's following a guy, but that's really not what's going on here. And it's really about her discovering herself Mm -hmm. and what she wants and how she kind of comes into being an adult. And I just think there's a nuance there. Like, yes, there's going to be some love triangle and love stories in the show, but that's not all that this show is. And I think this was just like the perfect scene to set up that that theme for the show. Mm-hmm. Absolutely. And I like how um, in the next part, Ben doesn't try and say like, you have to stay, like, don't leave. He just kind of wants to make sure that they're okay after everything that happened. And then he says, I can't wait to see this place when it snows. And then they drink their little drinks and yeah. watch this gorgeous New York yeah. view. But I'm saying only somebody from California would say something so ridiculous. I can't wait to see it when it snows. <laughs> you know, neither of those clowns have ever picked up a shovel in their lives. They've never, ever had to shovel snow. So, I mean, I think it was cute, but I, I was like triggered. <laughs> but also, but also when you're in college, you especially in New York, you don't have a car. You don't have to it's shovel true. to they get don't to have work. To deal with it. work. You don't have to scrape the frost off the windows of your car before school in the morning. Like they can just get on the subway and everything works. Easy uh, peasy. But That's yeah, true. he's definitely got the like Rockefeller Center Christmas yeah, idea. The romanticized idea of what exactly be like, which, yeah, maybe it will be for but them. <laughs> with the cinematography in this show, it's going to be that beautiful, gorgeous winter of New York. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah. So after her conversation with Ben, um, we now cut to Felicity sitting on Noel's bed. 
he's kind of pacing back and forth in his room and here's where we get the big speech from Noel, as he calls it. Basically, he's persuading her to stay, that she must not leave this school. This is fate. Like, yes, it's a challenge, but life is full of conflicts, right? Like nothing is ever going to be easy in life. And 10 years from now, you're going to be the fancy doctor with the fancy practice and kids and, you know, house in the suburbs. And all of a sudden you're going to look back and be like, what is my life? And it's all going to go back to this moment when her geek RA told her stay in New York or perish. And so it was this big speech from Noel saying like, look, you're going to have a lot of conflicts. Yes, this isn't easy, but it might actually be a worthwhile choice in your life to stay. Um, but of course, as we've said before, there are definitely some other motives that Noel probably has here and Felicity can feel that too. And so she asks Noel straight out, like, do you, do you have feelings for me? And he says, honestly, yeah. So I like that he was upfront about it right away when she asked. Um, he says, but don't disregard everything that I've said because of my affection for you, which again, to me shows that he does care about her. Like, even if they might not be together or she doesn't have feelings for him. Like he's still looking out for her and, and wants her to stay and make this choice for herself. Yeah. You all might disagree. It, it was a very sweet Noel moment. I did like this part. Mm -hmm. He obviously cares about her and he's also a really good RA. Just like, you know, his, his words of wisdom made sense. So yeah. Point for Noel for this scene. I'll give him and, half and a point. I like to that. <laughs> <laughs> and I like that he was also like her cheerleader in this moment. Like her parents weren't her cheerleaders. The guidance counselor didn't really say like, say like he hinted, he was like, look, you're already an artist. There might be a path here, but no one's really been championing her yet. Um, so I like that he kind of gives her this little boost to stay. But with that conversation, we've officially got a love triangle happening. We know now that Noel has feelings for her. She's still in love with Ben. And we don't really know what her feelings are for Noel. We think that Ben probably doesn't have feelings for Felicity, but then he made that overture. So who knows, right? It's all kind of up in the air. And this leads us to Julie and Felicity. You know, Julie walked out just saying, hey, so we don't really know where their friendship had, had left off. Um, so Julie approaches Felicity in the cafeteria. She says that she's sorry. She didn't mean to hurt her. And to her point here, she says, if she knew that Felicity liked Ben, she wouldn't have gone back to his place. That which is a I think is <laughs> <laughs> No, I, I, and like I said, I don't love Julie, but I think that's totally fair. Like Felicity, all she said was, oh yeah, we went to high school together. We're friends, we're not dating. Like she didn't say, oh yeah, we went to high school together. I've had a crush on him forever. She didn't mention any of that, no. so. But she knows what Ben Julie looks Smith, like. like. Obviously Felicity's in love with him. Come on. <laughs> Anybody right? would know that. That's like, yeah. come on. Yeah. So, are, are, is Julie that dense? We've been asking if are, are men that dense. Is Julie that dense? Like, really, girl? You didn't she know. You be. had no idea. Come on. <laughs> come on. In this moment, that's flimsy. I was gonna give it to her. I'm gonna say time will tell. If she, oh, if I had known, I never would have, you know, gone back to his place. Time will tell. Um, but Julie says she's not gonna see him again. Felicity responds like, it doesn't really matter. I'm leaving. Like, we're good. I'm leaving. Go see Ben. Do whatever you want. And that's kind of how they leave off their quasi-friendship. I don't know. It wasn't the best resolution to that conflict. Well, Julie's I don't not know, doctor, best. if you have thoughts. <laughs> um... I mean, I think I think it was okay for her now, uh, because she did at that moment intend to leave anyway. So I don't know that somebody would have been very highly motivated to make a really sincere, like, okay, we can't leave this on bad terms. Like I'll never, you know, I won't be able to live with myself if I move back to California knowing we weren't good. I don't think it's like, I think Julie's kind of low on her priority list at this point because she's, you know, at that bottom part again, like, am I going to stay? Am I going to go? It's like, Julie is like kind of a non-issue almost compared to this like really big decision she's about to make. And Felicity just kind of looked defeated too. Like, it's fine. It doesn't matter. I'm leaving. Yeah. Like, she didn't look completely resolved or at peace. She just kind of looked defeated. Yeah. Um, She's also not resolved kind of or at peace about staying in New York either. So I think that's kind of taking precedence over the whole Julie thing at the moment. Yeah. It's like, who cares about Julie right now? I got bigger issues to worry about <gasps> than Julie. True. 
And some of those issues are her parents. So as Felicity mentioned, her parents are now in town um, and they're having dinner at a fancy restaurant. And Dr. Porter, again, um, I just feel very anxious throughout this whole conversation because he's talking about providing amnesty to her, which is a very weird word, in my opinion, to I use like for your daughter. Mom. I think the, the mom's was it her mom? It. Okay. Yeah, I just watched it again. <laughs> and it was her okay. mom. <laughs> yeah. But either like what a weird word to use for your child. Like, hey, we want to help you come home. No, I'm providing you amnesty. That was just Yeah, yeah was it weird. is kind of <laughs> intense, like a more intense way to approach it than was necessary, probably. Yeah. Um, and basically they're bribing her to come back. They're gonna cover all of her expenses, they're gonna pay off the loans. As long as she comes back and goes to Stanford and gets back on track, she might take like a semester off or something and then reapply in the fall. But her dad, Dr. Porter, had already made sure that she could get back into Stanford by making a few calls and having a few lunches like he did in the fall. And, you know, they kind of breeze over that part. But Felicity's like confused and stunned, like, wait, what did you just say? And they say, guess what? Also, if you come back, you can have mom's car woo, and they woo. hand her the key. <laughs> they hand her the keys and she goes right for that panic button because she's like, oh my God, this is way too much. And she's like, what do you mean you made a few calls? He's like, or like, what do you mean? Like you did in the fall? He's like, well, you know, when you applied the first time I made sure you got in, I, you know, had to make a few calls and have a few lunches and just make sure that you got in. So basically he had to pull a bunch of strings to get her in the first time. It's just sad. And like, did she not have what it took to get in on her own? Or did he just not think she did? You right. Know? We like, don't really know. Exactly. And I think, yeah, she that means she doesn't know either. So that would make her question herself, too. It's like, they don't believe she can be in New York. He didn't really believe he she could be at Stanford even, you know, if he had to go through those measures. Like, what what's going on with them? Like, how do they see her? And how does she see herself? And if yeah. she didn't have, and if she didn't have the grades or the GPA or whatever it was, that's also like, oh, okay, I didn't really belong at Stanford, mm -hmm. so maybe this is the place that I really could belong. Exactly. Um, so she she tells him, hey, at least if I made a mistake, at least it was mine. And she said, look, I think going back to Stanford would be a pretty rash decision now, wouldn't it? So <laughs> I'm gonna stay. And we get to celebrate because she's staying in New York. She's staying at UNY. There's a show that we can watch because she's staying there. <laughs> <laughs> and she ends the scene, call back to her conversation with Ben. She says, I really can't wait to see what the city looks like when it snows, which was just really cute. It was. And I wasn't triggered when she said it. I thought it was like, oh, <laughs> that, that was a nice callback. I appreciated it. That was a good callback. Mm -hmm. All right. We get our first beautiful slow-mo of Felicity walking through the streets of New York, first of many. Curls bouncing <laughs> yeah. as she walks. Yeah, it's iconic. I almost think that was like one of the first times she wore her hair down in the episode, maybe. I feel like it was always like half up or up. I think in the negligee, no oh, yeah, 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 right, her, right. her hair was down. Yeah. Uh, I can't remember if graduation was... I'm obsessed with her hair. Um, <laughs> I read an article. They they chose to have her hair up and down at different moments for a reason. I think when her hair was down, mm. there was a little bit more vulnerability happening yeah. versus when it was pulled back. That would make sense. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I, I did a deep dive on some of these things. <laughs> Love it. <laughs> so we finally get to hear Sally's voice, who I don't know if it was ever said, but it's we assume it's Janine Garofalo who is the narrator for Sally. I don't know. I don't know if she was ever in the credits of the yeah. show, but I am it, deep that's deep probably yeah. Yeah. That's a very yeah. distinct it's, voice. It's, yeah, it's widely known that it was like '90s wonderkin Janine Garofalo. Like, just yeah. she's an icon. Mm -hmm. But also, this is a very different role for her. I feel like she's usually funny obviously mm -hmm. she's a comedian right and now she's taking this very kind of thoughtful mentor role yeah. in the show even though it's just a voice role i think it's also kind of a departure from what she's normally done yeah 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 she did it well most of the um, narration by sally is just very soothing to me like listening to her advice and and just the way she speaks i don't know i just love i love her voice and i love some of the quotes throughout the series that she she says, so um, at the end of this episode, she says one of my favorite quotes 
and it's, I guess when your heart gets broken, you sort of start to see the cracks in everything. I'm convinced that tragedy wants to harden us and that it's our mission to never let it. Um, like I've, I printed that quote out long ago and I always look at it whenever I'm like having a tough time in my life or going through a breakup. This is just so wise and it's so beautiful. Yeah, and Sally's really, she's really the moral center of the film. Felicity's obviously our hero, and she needs this mentor or guide to kind of get her through adulthood and, and help her kind of come into her own. So while Sally might be talking about her own experiences in her life, they obviously apply to whatever Felicity's going through in that episode. <laughs> um, so even though, even though Sally's going through her own incredibly awful heartbreak of her fiance dying you know it's relating to felicity's heartbreak in the first episode of all the i mean it's one episode and all the ups and downs that we've had already with ben and her parents and her friend her new best friend there's a lot that has happened and and this note back this letter back tape back from sally can kind of help her heal and get through that too i just yeah i love that sally is this moral compass for for felicity at least in these initial season yeah <laughs> and it's not actually advice she doesn't really say oh i think you should do this i think you should do that it's just truly this what we would call in in psychology this unconditional positive regard it's just very supportive and nurturing mm -hmm. and it's not saying well this is what happened to me so if i were you i'd do this it's just it's just really relating to her with a, a respect i think so she can trust her to make her own decisions she's not like the adult who knows better so i appreciate that yeah, and maybe that's why Felicity can talk to Sally like she can't really speak to other people because she treats her with respect and treats her like an adult. Um, they just have a really beautiful relationship. Yeah, I wish I had a Sally in my life. <laughs> we, we could all use yes, a Sally. Yes, <laughs> absolutely. And also in the slow-mo scene um, that Sally is narrating over, Felicity's little leather backpack, like I wanted to immediately add to my cart and get one of those it was just so cute i mean her whole vibe it's not i you know i live in southern california and it's hot here it's not autumn yet but i just wanted to grab all of her wardrobe and buy it for once the once the weather cools off i already got a cardigan i got it when we first decided to make this podcast i ordered a, a you know a chunky cable knit cardigan and i was gonna wear it you for gotta this. get the cable knits yep yep oh yeah yeah there's more oh, in the car nice too. sweaters yeah, love it. It's coming. I did wear my curly hair, so in in honor of Felicity as well. <laughs> um, and yeah, and then we also see that while she's walking the streets of New York, again, must be a tiny city because she runs into Julie. Right. It looks like in a park, in a park, um, and we can kind of see them talking. We don't overhear the conversation, but basically they hug and they look like they're back on good terms, which is nice to see. Um, so obviously she, she still has a friend in Julie mm -hmm. and that really is the pilot that sets us up for the rest of this show. We've got some new friends, we've got some love interests, and yet if you've seen the show before, you know, we haven't even met all of the main characters yet. Like one of my favorites is still to come. So yes, looking yeah, so much it. happened, but there's, but there's still so much more to come. Other things that I think are noteworthy from the episode and the show overall, number one, the lighting, we've mentioned it a couple mm -hmm. of times, but they just, the lighting director, whoever you are, we should look this up and we'll, we'll give them a shout out in the next episode, but it just gives this very again grounded but moody vibe to the show that you don't see in other like teen wb dramas of that of that age buffy was definitely very shadowy but that was like to make it scary right, right? like she's slaying vampires but dawson's creek you don't really see this kind of lighting in this show and i thought it just almost became its own character in the show right. like whenever she's going through a hard time mm -hmm. she's sitting in the dark mm -hmm. and it looks more so natural beautiful. it doesn't look like a bunch of set lights yeah. or you know a blaze yeah. it's just it's a more natural and that probably is what makes it more grounded and relatable because yeah we don't sit with the lights on all <laughs> all day mm -hmm. everywhere we go yeah i can't think of another show even to this day that uses lighting in that way even just like watching a scene where she was walking down the hallway of her dorm room there's no like bright hideous fluorescent lights in the ceiling it's just like little lights on the tables or like little pull and little sconces in yeah, the hallway sconces. oh yeah so i don't know it's just very beautiful and it makes me feel so cozy when mm -hmm. i watch it like 
Yeah. Well, in these days, there's been a lot of criticism of TV shows like Game of Thrones, what, the sequel, The House of Dragons, and a lot of movies. It everything is so dark. It's too dark. You can't even yeah. see what's go. You can't even see what's going on. Yet this mm -hmm. show is definitely darker, but everything that needs to be lit is lit. Like I can see the faces. I know who's talking. Yeah. I know what's going on. So and I, it's purposeful. It's, whereas yeah. the other, yeah. when it's too dark, it's like, okay, you don't have enough special effects going on or you didn't choreograph that fight scene well enough. So, but this feels much more purposeful, much more realistic. Mm -hmm. And another aspect of the show that I think made it very relatable was the wardrobe. Again, this is 1998. So we're kind of getting past grunge and moving into the early 2000s where we will see more of the Paris Hilton, you know, Y2K fashion, which is currently back in style. But <laughs> Gen Z just wanted to let you all know Felicity invented Normcore. And this episode, this pilot is just like Normcore perfection. Again, I don't think you see this type of wardrobe on TV anymore. It's just sweaters, jeans, Birkenstocks. Um, these days, I think and, and even just shows slightly later mm -hmm. than Felicity, like the OC or Gossip Girl, everything is designer. They're all rich and wearing fancy clothes. Sorry, but I couldn't afford any of that. Mm -hmm. I, I still don't wear designer clothes in my 30s. Right. And it looks um, very mature. Exactly. So, on high school students, it looks like they're dressing like adults, basically. Mm -hmm. And like high heels, platforms, fancy stuff, like going to high school, like I, no I was way. wearing plaid and jeans. Like, yeah. So I felt like Felicity, the wardrobe also made it feel very relatable. And even Dawson's Creek was like this in the beginning. I remember they used to do a lot of promotions with American Eagle. Mm -hmm. And so a lot of the sh clothes that like Joey would wear on Dawson's Creek, yeah. like you could buy at American Eagle. Yeah. So I think, again, it it really helped you relate to her as a student, as, as someone who person. could follow her story. Yeah. Yeah. So with that, uh, I'd love to hear about your freshman years. I mean, the three of us, we've all been to college and, you know, we've gone through some of the things that Felicity's gone through and something that the show does really well is hold up a mirror to a lot of our college experiences. So um, what were your freshman years like? Did you cry in a lecture hall on your first day? Did you follow any boys to school? <laughs> what were they like? <laughs> I followed Melissa's brother. Just run. kidding. <laughs> what? Oh, yeah, Not even we were just friends then. <laughs> what? I thought you guys were together at the beginning of college. I don't think so. I think we had already broken up. No. Okay. Well, I, mean, I don't know. <laughs> I don't remember. Awkward. Fine, but I followed him. A long time ago. <laughs> we'll go with the first slide. It was a long, long time ago. Yeah. <sighs> Anyway, I was going to say, I feel like I did cry a lot freshman year. <laughs> um, so I was an art major and I had a lot of rough professors who would just like rip your artwork to shreds in front of everyone. So I do remember I crying. Uh, I don't know if I cried during the class. I think I cried probably afterwards when I was alone. Um, but I did relate to the idea of not really knowing maybe what you want to do with your life once you're in college. I don't think that 18 year olds, seniors in high school know what they want to do forever. Like just having to pick a major is so stressful because you're still somewhat like a child and you, you don't know what will happen in the future. So I think going into college, I was kind of just a little lost as far as my major and what I wanted to do. So I relate to Felicity in that way. And I definitely was boy crazy. Like I remember having a crush on a guy in my in my freshman year, like drawing class who like I didn't know at all. He was just cute. Maybe he said like a couple words to me and I was like, This guy's awesome. Like I must Did, get did you have the opportunity to hold a pint of his blood? No, never did have to hold a pint of his blood. I did find out like bands that he liked, I think maybe on Facebook or something. And then I made like a mixed CD of different songs of those bands that he liked. Um, and I played it during like one of our drawing classes. And he was like, what? You like this band? I was like, yeah. <laughs> so we've got some manufactured moments. Um, so, you know, I was Oh my God, you, do you listen to this band? I totally forgot you like them. <laughs> Yeah, I was making fun of Felicity for being a little crazy, but I guess I was like that in some ways, too. <laughs> what about you guys? I oh. mean, I I am the youngest sibling, and 
I don't know. I think I've, I don't know. I was definitely more afraid to go off on my own. Like I still completely made the decision of where I went to college and why, but I didn't know any, like no one from our graduating class went to the same school as me. And as someone who's more introverted and shy, like having your parents drop you off and you are by yourself, (laughs) maybe for the first time. I think that first night on my own, I was like sobbing in my dorm room because my roommate had already known a ton of people from her high school and she was off hanging out and having fun with them. So I was like alone in my dorm room crying. I'm like, how am I going to make friends? You know, I was just distraught. And of course, that night there was a midnight movie event for our dorm and I'm locking my door and I'm kind of walking by some others and someone else walks out of their room and is locking their door. And we're both like, oh, are you going to this thing? Yeah, are you? And then you walk together. And again, it's like that Julie and Felicity moment where there's just like one little moment and all of a sudden you just glom onto them because you don't know anyone else. So I feel like those moments in the show where you're making friends and and how you make friends was really relatable for me and just how scary it is too to be there on your own and, and not knowing anyone in a new city can be very overwhelming, even if you didn't follow a boy across the country. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> Well, on a serious note, I um, actually can relate more to Ben um, because I did want to get far away from my parents. And apparently three and a half hours will do the trick because <laughs> I didn't need to go across the whole country to, to get away. I just needed to go a few hours down south and I was very happy there. I, I really enjoyed my freshman year um, because I was with Melissa's brother and we were best friends. We, Whether we were still dating at that time or not, we were best friends and we went everywhere. We had so much fun. I really enjoyed the diversity on campus and exploring different arts like um, acapella concerts and plays and other musical performances and stand-up comedy and like the Ebert Overlooked Film Festival. We went to that all the time. So I had a lot of fun. I had um, I had a really good experience. My freshman year was actually really great. Not so much the later years, probably because that's when I wasn't (laughs) Melissa's brother after that. (laughs) But that's the story for another day. That's a story for never. It's Just a whole other it. podcast. Yeah, that's a whole other podcast. <laughs> exactly. But I really, I really enjoyed my freshman year. I enjoyed getting away from home and uh, meeting new people and seeing new things. It was, it was a good time. I miss it. I miss the campus all the time. I was gonna say now looking back, I feel like I made it my college situation sound awful. I actually <laughs> absolutely love co- like it was just that first <laughs> night, like panic attack moment. Like, what did I do? I don't know anyone. How am I going to make friends? But yeah, I mean, I ended up loving all four years of yeah. school and I, yeah. Yeah. I think like several best, people from best our years high school, of your life type of thing. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Several people from our high school actually went to that college and a handful of them were in our same dorm. Um, like there's the girl side and the boy side. Mm-hmm. And so there, I, I felt like pretty secure because I did know people besides Melissa's brother. So it wasn't, it wasn't that bad. I think it would have been a lot different if i completely didn't know anybody and I had to kind of start from scratch that absolutely would have freaked me out yeah I think um college was by far way better than high school and they're completely different experiences but I would relive college in a heartbeat Mm -hmm. freshman year for me at the very least that's it (laughs) (laughs) I was gonna say I can't say the same about high school but (laughs) obviously there are certain friendships that I still cherish to this day, but the whole, yeah, the whole experience overall college was definitely um, a step up. (laughs) Mm -hmm. So Felicity, the show, 25 year anniversary, a lot has changed. Uh, I'd love to hear from you. Do you think that it holds up today? Do you think it'd still be relevant if someone that's Gen Z, 17 or 18 years old, they turn it on on Amazon Prime or Hulu or something today, like, do you think they would enjoy this? I think the overall theme of finding yourself and finding your identity will never go away. I think that that's something that everyone struggles with at some point in their life. The overall theme of like, kind of your first big love or, or, you know, relationships when you're young, that doesn't change. I think, you know, we were talking about like clothes and, and the styles of the time are different, but that that overall idea of figuring out who you are, that that's timeless. I agree. Yeah. 
Yeah, it's a strong coming of age story. And I think had it just been a story about a girl that follows a guy to college and their love story, I think we probably would have cringed today and said that that's not very empowering. But yeah. both the way that JJ and Matt wrote this, it did give her strength and like autonomy over her own life. And other episodes, my feelings might change with a rewatch, but nothing was super cringy to me. I thought that overall, the the pilot really held up. Yep, I agree with all of that. I think they did a really good job and it's enjoyable to watch over and over again. And I think it would be enjoyable for first time viewers today too, because of those um, very human kind of common ground factors, you know, like it's any of us can struggle with that no matter what decade it is. So I like it. And I think other people will too. Well, you heard it here first, folks. Felicity is still deserving of a rewatch, and we will be rewatching every episode from season one, um, dropping new episodes every week. Please join us. Um, you can watch it on Amazon Prime, on Hulu. I think you can probably rent it or buy it as well. It's definitely worth a watch if you're a fan like us, come rewatch with us. And if you're new to the show, um, please keep up with us and, and watch each new episode. And we'll be dissecting every single one every week. Thanks for joining us. And we'll get back to episode two next. Bye. 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 Felicity Was Here is produced, written, and edited by Heather, Melissa, and Dr. Joe. You can find us on Instagram and TikTok at Felicity Was Here Pod. If you're enjoying the pod, please leave us a review and help us spread the word. We appreciate you and would love to hear from Felicity super fans like us. So send us your feedback, ask us your burning questions, or just say hey at felicitywashearepod at gmail.com. We may even read your note in a future episode. Talk to you all next week.